What's going on, people? This is Jagos, and I wanted to talk about moral panics tonight. Now, this is going to be an article down in the underbar, which talks about the moral panics that came from 19, like um, the 1980s, 1990s, in terms of trying to ban the history of Dungeons and Dragons and how that all worked out. We still play D and D. We play White Wolf. We play Warhammer. We play things with dice. We play games with. Um, all of these different types of d20 modern games and all everything in terms of D and D that has been going on for quite some time now there's been moral panics on almost everything the waltz comic books rock and roll romance novels movies television video games etc 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 the point of this is to actually look into the history and show that moral panics come and they go now i'm not going to get too much into the article but the fact is it is something that was important to me because i had to learn a lot about different people just because of the fact that i was playing DD in the 90s with some of my friends we had the 2.0 version books we had to learn how to throw out some of the material make up our own rules sit here and make it fun for everybody we had one girl that was a horrible man maxer meaning that she wanted to max out all of her stats and try to minimize um some of the stats that she didn't like for whatever right for whatever reason and we had other people that did other things so you had to learn a lot about different personality styles how to make everybody vibe want to have fun enjoy the game and it pretty much lasted until you know we each had to leave the island for our own reasons over the years so what i learned from that is you know politics economics because you have to learn how to deal with inflation on you know fixed items and all of this other crazy mess you would not believe how much it took to have one good dungeon or one good political um, place that people might enjoy for various different reasons. So that was something that we did. We had plenty of dungeon crawling. We had plenty of like political intrigue. And it was always something to keep people off kilter about how the world works, how they understand the story that's going on, how we weave those stories together. And for the most part, me being the DM, I had a lot more girls than I did guys. So when I hear all this crap about girls don't game, these girls had gotten me into gaming. They had gotten me into D&D gaming. They had gotten me into tabletop RPGs. So I don't want to hear that girls don't game because they do. And most people don't recognize this whole women in gaming thing as an issue because they've probably had to deal with the fact that their sister, their mother, somebody, anybody played video games. So there is that. Now, on top of this, there's other parts to it where you have to deal with the moral panics that are coming up nowadays. Right now, we've had to deal since about 1993 with people talking about violence in video games and what they were trying to do is say that violence in video games causes children to turn into violent death simulators and we've had to deal with this thing for a long time where kids supposedly turn into these violent people and that's that argument comes from a lot of different moral guardians um right now I mean, even Anita Sarkeesian has basically done this in her Damsel 2 video, and it was ridiculous then. It doesn't bear out because as more people play video games, the violence has actually gone down. I mean, you can go to Craig T. Ferguson of the University of Texas if you want to sit here and see more statistics on it. Just saying. But anyway, to look into the whole sexism topic, that's another social construct supposedly the gaming industry out of 40 years is sexist and uh no it's not it hasn't been but people want to sit here and vilify it they can go ahead and do it all they want that's really not going to change anything except maybe the short term i mean we may get a few extra people that you know stop and consider that stuff and you know as they develop games but for the most part 
I haven't seen any evidence that it's going to change anytime soon. So when you look at these moral panics that come up and you want to deal with them, the best way to deal with them, look at these people, point out the moral panic, point out the history. Gaming has been around for 40 years and quite frankly, it's going to be around for a lot longer. People enjoy their entertainment. This industry is making $93 billion. That's how much it made last year. And then you're going to tell me that it's not successful because of, it's successful because of, you know, discrimination against one gender? I don't think so. Anyway, that's all I really want to say about it. The main points are the fact that moral panics, they come, they go. We have to deal with it. We have to watch as this wave rides itself out. It burns itself out. People get tired of the topic and they find something else to get morally outraged on. And that's a lot of people that get morally outraged. Believe me. But anyway, I hope you all enjoy the articles down in the underbar. And I'll see you all next time.